Hello and welcome to week two. This is the Descent Board with Her Starts Molds. I'd like to welcome everybody back and uh, I appreciate you taking your time to continue this journey of a project with me. Um, first I'd like to say thanks to everybody that subscribed and everybody that has written in. Uh, so far all the responses have been positive. It's uh, made working on this project a lot of fun. It's given you know some extra motivation to get the castings done and uh, things like that. So this week I took some time to cast up a bunch of the molds that we're going to need for the project. Um, just to give you an idea that this project is going to require mold 282 and mold 282 is the is, has the door, it has the door arches, the gold piles, the boards in there. Um, it also has the chest. You're going to have to cast that mold 24 times in this project. And then you're going to have to cast the, these are the floor mold pieces for the cavern floor. And um, that's going to give you your bigger, your bigger blocks like this. You're going to have to cast that 34 times. So far I've done 20 castings and um, things have come out really well. The vibration table is working out outstanding. If nothing else, do some of your casting on the cafeteria trays because all your mess is contained in those trays. I do all my casting in the office. There's no mess at all, you know, except maybe where I pour some of the powder around the scale. But other than that, everything stays on the board, it hardens on the board. I give it a quick smack on the inside of my garbage can in the garage and all the dried plaster falls right off and I'm good to go again. So um, I've also been casting the, I call them the premium chests, and that's these chests right here. And that comes out of the cavern floor accessory mold. That was the mold from video three from last week where I was popping out the barrels and things like that. Um, this is the standard chest. And if you look at Bruce's instructions on his website, that is the chest that they paint up for this. I just really like this chest better. It looks better. It's a little bit bigger. So I don't know if that's gonna cause any problems, but I do have plenty of these built and I've been casting just this chest out of that mold as I've been going along because that chest, if you look at the mold, resides right here. And so it's easy to put the plaster in and then scrape just this one part off so you can pop those chests off. So I've been doing that with some of the pieces on the edges as I've had extra plaster material in my cups. I may fill up the barrel and then just scrape this part off. I tried doing it in the middle of the mold just to get like a single crate out of here and that didn't work very well because when you scrape it, it scrapes all your stuff. It's all going to go in one of these holes around it and then you're going to have dried plaster and I don't think you really want to get one down in a hole like that. But, you know, so you got to take a shot, you know, and shake it out and try to get that dried plaster out of there. But for the ones on the edge, you know, like the barrels, you, can, you can't cast enough of these barrels um, or these premium chests. The, uh, the wooden floor um, tiles like that. These are really good because they're right there on the edge. You put some product in, you give it a scrape and you're good to go. Um, the tiles you see in front of you are sitting on a baker's rack and what this, it's just a wire cookie rack that has some feet on it. And as I started casting, you know, if you, if you take a piece of this and you put it you know, you pop it out of your mold and you put it on your table when you're done. When you pick it up, you're gonna be surprised at how much water is underneath that piece itself. Um, so putting it up on the wire rack, I found that about 48 hours, these drops blocks are completely dry. They're nice and bright white because when you put them on here, I usually take like a door and I'll put it in the middle, a door that's already complete as like a reference piece because that allows me to, at a quick glance to look at the blocks and determine if they look dry because they are noticeably grayer in color when you first take them out of the mold than what the finished bright white looks like. So this is just one rack. Um, over here is uh, just another rack, you know, just, just multiple castings, two, three, four castings fits on each one of these racks and the racks over here are just some of the longer black aluminum they got the fold up feet I think these were ten dollars at Walmart I think I got four of them for that so it's pretty cheap they stack on top of each other so if you're limited on space you can you know I normally stack them up high two three high 
and then they just sit right here on my desk. Once they're dry, I like to take, and this is just regular Plano box, and just sort them out. Um, like over, over here, I've got eight doors. Um, so this is like eight castings that is in this box right here. And the quick way to tell how many times you've cast each mold is just maybe count the doors in one mold, count the big four tile blocks out of the other mold. You know, so if you're casting the mold each time, you can, you can tell. And then this is that dungeon cavern floor accessory mold, which is just too awesome not to cast on there. So I've cast that a few times. I've put those pieces in here and I'm gonna use, use these pieces. Um, for the descent board and some also some other projects so um what i have planned for today is we're going to take bruce's instructions and we're going to reproduce these are the boards that we're trying to reproduce with his molds so i am going to take and we're going to cast two of the six not cast we're going to assemble two of the six by sixes uh, three of the four by fours and three of the four by twos. Um, I'm also, I have a door that we're gonna put together. Now this is just gonna be kind of a scrap door. I'm not gonna glue it all the way because you have to, you're supposed to paint the doors apart before you put them together according to the instructions. So you'll see that these are sitting on cork. Um, I bought my cork from Amazon and it is it's uh the quartet cork tiles it's eight to a pack and the price on that is uh ten dollars and 17 cents with prime shipping there there's no adhesive on the back so you know it's all you know they're not super rigid but I think once we get the glue on there with the blocks, we should be okay. So I'm going to start with this. That's why we're going to do some limited pieces today and see how it all comes out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get the blocks that um, are over here sorted. And uh, I'm going to put them in an organizer. And then when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll start with the instructions. And uh, we'll put together a few, of these, a few of these boards down here and see how they look. I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. Okay, what I've done is I've taken the uh, cork board and um, I've taken the first two sheets and cut it in accordance with Bruce's directions. And what you're looking at here is the original descent tile from the board game. This is the six by six. And I have dry fit the her starts blocks onto the tile that I'm gonna glue it to. So I've done this with uh, one of the six by sixes I've also done it with the four x four, and I've done it with the two x four hallway. So under each one of these tops is the actual Herstarts blocks that we're gonna glue down. Now, before I mentioned an organizer, um, I picked this up at Home Depot about a week ago, and um, it uh, it's worked out pretty good on there. It's just kind of a lazy Susan. So you can divide up the blocks that you're using you know, for your current build and just kind of put them in here and it makes it easy to sort, you know, you can put different types. Uh, the only thing on the bottom, I need to go back to Home Depot and see if there was a base piece for this that's supposed to go under this. If not, I'm just gonna buy another, a third piece to put on the top and maybe a wooden Lazy Susan to put under the bottom one so I can spin it because it's, you know, it sits on the floor mat right now, but I got everything grouped up, you know, all the door pieces are right here and things like that. but. You know, pretty much everything that I was using was the top six compartments and three or four of the compartments at the bottom. So it held out pretty good. Um, the next thing is on Bruce's page, on the Hearst Arts homepage, which is in the show note link, you know, all these projects for these molds, you know, he does, they're tremendous. Everything we're doing and everything I'm videoing is pretty much step by step right here. You know, it tells you what mold you're gonna need how many times you're gonna to need to um, uh, cast each mold. And uh, pretty much we are right here on this step, the building the board sections. And if you notice the Band-Aid on my finger, I cut the heck out of my finger cutting this cork 
So it was dumb because I was holding the ruler down and I tried to take the top of the X-Acto knife off with one hand and I nicked my finger really good. So I had a slight delay because of my X-Acto knife. My girls are always picking on me because I have a pink X-Acto knife and I always tell them so I know exactly where this is on my hobby table all the time and then I go and just about slice the tip of my finger off. So be careful cutting the, tor the cork. Remember that Take an extra second with the knife on there. That it could have been a lot worse, you know, a quick thing of liquid skin and you know, my my finger's okay, but boy it bled because that is a brand new blade you're gonna want to use when you cut this tor uh, cork. So if you look, it takes four it takes four twelve by twelve pieces of cork, and this is how they're going to be cut. Uh, the black areas over here are pieces that we're not gonna use. So what I've done is I've done this first piece right here. So I have two six by six sections and then I have three four by four sections and three two by four sections all come out of that piece. So three of the sections are right here on the table and then over here I have the additional sections cut to make the board. For the glue I'm going to use the Aline's tacky glue and put it down. This is a quick dry. Um, that's what my hobby store had on the shelf so I grabbed that and I've used it on a few pieces I've been playing around with and it's, it's worked out fine so um, I'm going to use the Aline's tacky glue and uh, so what I'm going to do now is put this down I'm going to uh, put some glue on the mold and take all the pieces that I've dry fit and move them onto the board with the glue and uh, let that set up for a few minutes and we'll, we'll see how it turns out 